this uh, problem set, we're going to introduce subtraction. We haven't really talked about subtraction. We've been talking about adding integers and expressions, and then we talked about multiplying integers and expressions. So now we're going to talk about subtraction. Before we do that, we, we, let's review uh, additive inverses. Additive inverses are really the same thing as opposites, right? There's two ways to think of an additive inverse. The additive inverse of a number well, the two numbers are additive inverses if they add up to give zero. Any, any, any two numbers or expressions that add up to give zero are additive inverses. A geometric way to think of it, though, is the additive inverse of a number is on the other side of zero. It's a reflection of that number across zero. For example, the additive inverse of three is negative three. The additive inverse of negative four is four. So every time you take the additive inverse, you reflect across zero. This has come up before. The additive inverse of a number is the same thing as multiplying the number by negative one. In fact, you could think of the negative integers as just the additive inverses of the positive integers, right? The, the additive inverse of three is negative three, and it, it, it can be obtained by simply multiplying three by negative one. This has also come up before. What is the opposite of uh, the additive inverse of a number? The opposite of the additive inverse of a number, I'm trying really hard not to say negative because you don't know whether this is positive or negative. But anyway, the opposite of the additive inverse of a number is the, is, the, is the number itself. And all that's saying is when you reflect the number across zero once to get its opposite, and then you reflect it again, you get back to where you started. Okay? Now that last fact uh, can be used to uh, answer the question we were looking at last time. Why is the product of two negative numbers positive. I think you might like this, this reasoning a little bit better than what we did last time with the distributive law, but anyway. But let's look at negative 3 times negative 2 again. You could write it like this. Remember, negative 3 means negative 1 times 3. Negative 2 means negative 1 times 2. Then if you, if you multiply the last three numbers together, 3 times negative 1 times 2 is negative 6. This is just another way of saying the opposite of negative 6. Isn't that what, what this is? When you multiply by negative 1, it's the same thing as the opposite. And by this property right here, the opposite of the additive inverse of a number is the number itself. So that's why it equals 6. You're reflecting 6 across 0 twice. Every time you multiply by negative 1, you reflect across 0. I think that's a little easier to understand, isn't it? Okay, so here we go. Now that we're going to introduce subtraction, I want you to see a pattern here. Uh, look at these two problems here. 5 plus negative 3, which equals 2 and 5 minus 3, which always also equals 2. Hmm, interesting. Let's look at another one. 7 plus negative 2, which equals 5, and 7 minus 2, which equals 5. Hmm. Whenever you add the opposite of a number, that's the same thing as subtracting the number, you see? And that's precisely how we define subtraction. When you subtract one number minus another, it's the same thing as adding the opposite of the second number. Okay? Subtracting a number is the same thing as adding the additive inverse or the opposite of that number. Now this is important. When is that this this is kind of confusing actually. When is the symbol a minus sign and when is it a negative sign or an opposite sign? Because we use the same symbol for both. The answer is if there's a number or expression in front of that symbol, it's a minus sign. This is 11 minus 9. But if there's an operation in front of the number, I should say if there's an operation in front of the symbol, in this case there's a multiplication, right? Implied multiplication. Or if there's nothing in front, then it's an opposite sign. You see, it's only a subtraction symbol if there's a number or expression in front. So this first one equals 2, the second one equals negative 99. Anyway, so what we're going to do here, this seems like a lot of writing. Uh, and eventually we'll abbreviate a little bit, but, but for now I just want, it's really important to understand what the definitions are. Uh, right, learn the definitions really well and then you can start using abbreviations. So all we're going to do here on the homework is just practice writing the subtraction symbol in additive form. Every time you see a subtraction, write it as plus the opposite. Okay, okay so when you see 5 minus 9, it becomes 5 plus negative 9. When you see um, negative 3 minus 11, now that's not, a, that's not a subtraction, but that is, right? This is just an opposite symbol. You replace the minus sign with plus a negative, you see? Think of the minus sign as being an abbreviation for plus the opposite. 
Okay, let's keep on going here. So when you see seven, negative seven X minus five M, saying it out loud helps a lot. That's a minus sign. So I'm gonna replace the minus sign with plus a negative. This minus sign becomes plus the opposite, right? They don't want us to simplify. We're just, we're just changing the form. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky here. Look, this is two minus negative nine, right? This is a minus sign, this is not. This minus sign becomes plus a negative. This negative sign does not change. It stays there, you see? The, the negative nine is still there. But this minus sign becomes plus a negative. So that, that's what they want you to do. So the answer would be two plus the opposite of negative nine. Now, eventually we're gonna simplify this and call this nine, but at this point, they just want you to, to learn the basics. Okay, here we go. Read it back. Negative 12 minus three minus negative seven. So that's, that's not a minus sign. That is a minus sign and that's a minus sign. This is gonna stay the same. So is this, this symbol is gonna stay the same. We replace this minus sign with plus a negative right here. This minus sign gets replaced with plus a negative, but this opposite sign in front of the seven stays there. So that's what they want. One more. Negative four Y minus X minus negative three. That's a minus sign because there's a number or expression in front. That's a minus sign because there's a number or expression in front. This is an opposite sign. It stays the same. So does this one. So when you change the minus sign to plus a negative, this minus sign becomes plus a negative. This minus sign becomes plus a negative. But this negative in front of the three stays there. Okay. So now we're going to go and finish the problem. Not only are we going to change the additive form, now we're going to actually simplify it, okay? Negative 9 minus 11, we change the additive form. And this is exactly like what we were doing in problem set number, uh, number 3 or 4, right? So this is negative 20. 5x minus 13x becomes 5x plus negative 13x, which is just negative 8x. You see, once you change it to additive form, it's gonna be exactly like what we've been talking about. So here we go, this is where it gets tricky. 13 minus negative five, that minus sign becomes plus a negative. This stays the same, so this is a good first step. Leave, leave this as negative five, just change the minus sign. Now let, let's get rid of the double negative, because the opposite of negative five is five, and then let, let's combine, get 18. Here, same idea, this is negative four s minus negative five s, this minus sign becomes plus a negative, but, but the negative in 5s stays the same and so does the negative 4s. Get rid of the double negative and then add like terms, you get s. Okay, we'll, we'll do a couple more and then we'll, I'll give you some to try. How about that? All right, here we go. Two minus five minus negative three. That's a minus sign, it changes to plus a negative. This is a minus sign, it changes to plus a negative. Then we get rid of the double negative on, on the three and now we just combine these and we get six or zero actually, we get zero. Last one, try the, so this was two y minus negative y minus y. That's a minus sign. That's a minus sign. This minus sign changes to plus a negative. This minus sign changes to plus a negative. This negative sign stays the same. Get rid of the double negative. And now when we add, we get two y. Okay. okay, why don't you try these problems? Um, be sure to change to additive form first and then simplify. Okay, here we go. It seems like a lot of writing, but it's important to know what the definitions are uh, before you start using shortcuts. So let, let, let's, just, let's just go ahead and show all the steps for a little while. Additive form, it becomes 17 plus negative 23. Final answer is uh, negative six. See, I think you're less likely to make, make, make a mistake if you change the additive form. For example, is, is, is this 30z, is it negative 30z? What is this? But if you change the additive form, it becomes negative 21z plus negative 9z. This is what we were talking about way, way back in problem set, uh, whatever that was, problem set uh, 11 or 12. Actually, that was more like problem set four. Anyway, negative 21z plus negative 9z is negative 30z. Okay, how about this one? Remember, this is where it gets sneaky. This minus sign becomes plus a negative. This does not change, it stays negative 20. So you should get that as a first step. Get rid of the double negative. So it's just, it's just 12 plus 20 which is 32. Same thing here. This is negative uh, 3m minus negative 3m. This minus sign becomes plus a negative, but this stays negative 3m. It doesn't change. Get rid of the double negative, and your answer is zero. Okay, you've got two more. On this one, read it back. It's six minus three minus negative five plus two. 
that's a minus sign, that's a minus sign. They change to plus and negative. This stays negative five, it doesn't change. So you get six plus negative three plus the opposite of negative five plus two. Get rid of the double negative, you get this. And when you add everything up, I get uh, three plus seven, which is 10. That's my final answer. Okay, this is a minus sign, that's a minus sign. This is a negative sign, it stays negative nine x, but this changes to plus and negative and so does this. So that would be a good first step. And then get rid of the double negative on the 9x. And then when you combine everything, I think everything cancels, doesn't it? No, that's not right. Which, what should it be? What is the answer? Should it be 18x? 18x is your final answer, right? 9x plus 9x is 18x. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.